Hello. Today, I would like to talk to you about another Okta Workflows template, this one for a new user registration use case. In this use case, we'd like to uh, take a custom payload. So this is a, a new user uh, payload that has all the details that you need uh, to create the user in the Okta platform. Now, this payload could come from uh, an external application that you have some sort of self-service registration capabilities. You have a UI that's going to collect data and then send it to be processed. Or it could come from an external upstream system where something else in your system is deciding that this user needs to be created on the identity platform. Now, the importance of this integration is that it allows you to remove all the custom logic from your application or your upstream service. Bringing that custom logic into workflows allows you to have a no-code solution that's much easier to administrate than cracking open your code and making changes on those platforms. Um, having the code and the um, custom integrations in workflows allows you to easily do things such as uh, external checks for duplicate users. Uh, maybe you need to do something like check for uh, a custom ID or something like that to validate that this user is actually part of your system and, and the uh, identity needs to be created. Uh, maybe you do need to do some kind of end user communications, such as um, things for implementing uh, user consent, uh, privacy and preference management, which is always very prevalent in these Cyan kind of solutions. And one of the important things that you can do here is that based upon the data, you can now start to make decisions so that you can have different flows for different types of data sets. So for instance, if you had an international uh, application and there was different flows for say Canada versus the USA, you can have a different uh, user consent or privacy management uh, for those different countries based upon the local laws. And you can do all of this within a single Octo workflows implementation just to ease the development and the push uh, of the uh, uh, final integration. Um, what this is going to look like when you start to create this, and in the example that I'm going to show you today, I decided to do a couple of things. So when I'm receiving the uh, payload from the API endpoint, I'm going to parse through all of the elements in there. And then I'm, I've decided for this example, I'm going to call an external system to check to see if the user already exists. If the user does exist, I'm just going to send an email with the explanation of what type of user, where they're from, and things like that. If they don't exist, then I'm going to actually create the user in the Okta platform and then enable some birthright entitlements, such as adding them to a group to allow them access to some kind of downstream resource. Um, I can send out activation emails. I can send out different kinds of notifications to other uh, members of systems, maybe a Salesforce or something like that. And then I can also do things like uh, take care of user consent, uh, preference management, things like that. And here's where I can make a decision based upon the payload that was entered into the system. I can make a decision of how to process that in order to comply with local laws. So what I'd like to do is show you how this can be implemented. So here I just have a simple uh, Postman, and this takes the place of the either the client application with self-service registration or of the external system that's pushing this uh, user creation down into the Okta platform. Now, do a little different here. I'm going to actually take this, I'm going to copy this, and when I come in here, I have my uh, Okta uh, workflows implementation, and I'm just going to do something just to show you. Now, I could have done this from the Postman taken place, but I can also do this in a unique way here where I can actually set it off in this Digba thing, and that allows you to see the actual workflow in execution without having to, say, trigger the external system and stuff like that, just to allow your, your integration and development process to be uh, that much easier. So here I'm going to run this, and you can see that I'm starting to execute my implementation. So while that's running, I just want to kind of go back here and show you the basic um, elements that are making up this particular workflows implementation. So you can see here, I have the initial parent flow, which is what the API is calling. Uh, then I also have some child flows here that have the different processing for different custom flows. And this one happens to be based on the country of origin of the particular user. You can say I also have some other things that are doing things on the Okta platform. 
Uh, these, this particular one is adding user to a particular group in Okta to entitle downstream resources. And this one is an external integration to Office 365 to send out some emails. Now I chose to put all of these child flows within this single folder, uh, mostly just for uh, ease of distribution. But I also could have done uh, something else where I had these child flows in logical folders, directories. And you can see here, I have quite a few different Okta implementations uh, so that I could use these in multiple uh, implementations without having to cut and paste and something like that. So just a bit of a, a logical uh, grouping of how I decided to implement this particular flow. So we can see here that this has gone through and completed. And if I come back here to the editor view, I can kind of go through some of the logic. So if you remember from the flow chart I was showing you before, I'm collecting the API endpoint here, I'm pulling the different elements out of the uh, payload, I'm looking at that particular um, payload, and then I'm deciding what to do. Now, in this case, I'm doing uh, an external system check to see if the user act already exists. In this case, um, I'm gonna look for that and decide that you know, has this user actually been created or not? If they were to be created, I would have sent uh, an email explaining what happened. Uh, in this case, the user has not been created. So you can see here, I'm calling the create user. Uh, I also could have done some error handling here so that if something happened in the creation process, I could have sent a message off. And here I'm doing some basic entitlements. So here's where I'm calling a child flow to add the user to that particular group. And that enables some downstream resources. Uh, right here, I'm sending a custom email out to the user, congratulating them on their new account. Um, now here, I'm using this type of uh, situation where I'm looking at some of the data that I received in the payload, and I'm deciding how to implement that particular flow. In this case, I'm calling a child flow, which is going to separate the processing of a uh, US resident user from a Canadian resident user. And then eventually I'm going to send the request back to the call and application, uh, giving the uh, status if the, everything was completed successfully or not. Um, this is you know, basically one uh, way that this thing could have been implemented. And as you can see by the flexibility of the workflows platform, uh, these things can be um, uh, changed into any type of custom logic you have, as well as things such as uh, going off to 365 and to these different trial processes here. Uh, we also could have implemented uh, some of the many connectors that um, Workflows has built into it to also send off things to, let's say, uh, a marketing campaign or some other system or service now if there was some other type of uh, integration that need needed to take place. So I hope this was helpful and you can see some of the powerful uses of the Okta Workflows feature. And I hope you have a very good day. Thank you.